This week on Music Worth Buying, we're going to be checking out Star Shaker, the latest from Michael Ubaldini. And Kiefer Sutherland's debut CD, Down in a Hole. Hello and welcome to another episode of Music Worth Buying. My name is TJR. I am a musician and music writer. And my name is Robert Kinsler and I am a music writer and a musician. Absolutely. So now that we've got that settled, um, we're here to share some music with you and CDs that we have been checking out and yep. uh, I think you should check out too. And I am going to start out with the latest release from Michael Ubaldini entitled Star Shaker. And this is his 12th album. That includes his side project, uh, Michael and the Lonesome Lots Playboys, Playboys right. his country. country yeah, like record. a honky-tonk uh, country yeah. project, yeah. yeah. And But this is his uh, 12th album, if you include mm -hmm. those with it. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah 12 Boy. studio yeah. albums he's done. Um, this album he's produced himself, and he's had some collaboration from Walter Clevenger. Right, who, who engineered it in his home studio in Costa yeah. Mesa. Absolutely, right. absolutely. And if you're not familiar with Michael, um, uh, you know, the LA t one of the first reviews he ever mm -hmm. got was the LA Times saying, uh, basically said, this guy here has his hand on the pulse, has his hand, how they put it? has his hand on the pulse beat of America better than Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, something, something like, yeah, along exactly, those lines. Yeah. 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 And, and I which, think that was actually, to, to credit, I think that was Mike Bohm, who's yeah. still with the Times, but he was a longtime music writer. Yeah. With it, and a writer that actually one of my own personal heroes. And, yeah. and I think it's spot on, too, his yeah. observation. In yeah. spite of this kind of critical praise he's gotten in the past, um, he still has not really like broken out huge in the mainstream mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. in, in, in a Definitely way that, a cult hero. Yeah, I'd more say. of a cult, yeah. cult status, uh, you know, uh, singer songwriter. Hopefully that changes. Um, but yeah, he, but he keeps consistently making really good albums. Um, one thing I will say about this album is, first of all, for a while there, uh, he had been kind of, his albums seemed to be themed. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael and the Lonesome Playboys was very honky-tonk mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. um, he would have an album that would be more acoustic folk, all acoustic right. folk straight through. Mm -hmm. Another album would be more, more uh, rock sounding. But here on this album, He's kind of just not worrying about that anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like write good songs, don't worry about the genre, just put them out there, mm -hmm. put them on the mm -hmm. same platter. Exactly. You know, like 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 a ten course dinner yeah. <laughs> where you've got different things you can try out. You know, if you don't like if you don't like the salad, maybe you'll like the steak. Right. Whatever. Uh -huh. And um, but you know, they're all really solid, good songs. And so I'm going to play one here for you right now. Um, this is called The Prodigal, One More Mile. Here we go. Had a pocket full of loot, some alcohol, some stash. A woman in black leather boots who burned through all of my cash. Laid my soul on the roulette wheel to botch me in excess. Paid down to my flesh and bone. Forty miles out of desperation One more mile till I'm safe at home um, What I would say about this song, and then we can maybe after the mm -hmm. next cut we can talk generally about it, mm -hmm. but you know there's just something in his delivery where he, he his songs fit his lyrics so mm -hmm. well. He sings with such a an honesty and, and it's like it never comes off as contrived. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of there's, there's some there's an explosion of Americana and country and roots mm -hmm. music right now. Mm -hmm. Michael has always delved into this, and 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 he just keeps getting better and better at yeah. it. Yeah, uh, he's basically riffing on the Bo Diddley beat on this song, uh, but there's a certain smoothness to how he vibes this particular uh, his take on mm -hmm. it with this particular song. And lots of people have you know have worked with the Bo Diddley beat in the past. Um, one of his strong points as a songwriter has been he's always been able to write songs where he is, you know, drawing from roots inspired rock and roll. Mm -hmm. He's always been drawing from that well. He's always able to match his music with lyrics that really 
uh, bring, that are very evocative, they bring images into your head. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the lines in this song where he says, you know, lost all my money to a woman in black leather boots. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it kind of, it, it creates a sense of mystery where mm -hmm. each person's going to interpret that a different mm -hmm. way. Um, played my soul on the roulette table. Mm -hmm. You know, these kind of evocative mm -hmm. lines that you can read so much into mm -hmm. and everybody's going to read something different because of where their own personal experience yeah, I think comes that, from. Yeah, that's true. And I also think this is, in some respects, some of the most raw uh, music I've heard since its early albums, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as far as just a, a certain rawness and immediateness. And I'm, uh, and I'm guessing that might be a little bit of Walter Clevenger because his work with the Derrick Kings and uh -huh. he engineered the album, you know, it, it's it. These are great songs. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not saying they're they're not sloppy, yeah. but there's a rawness and authenticity to them, which mm -hmm. I think gets at what you're saying. Yeah. Where where there it's like it's like the great Neil Young uh, interview I read once, where he said if he has to do a song more than three or four times, mm -hmm. he just puts it down because he doesn't want the emotion to be sapped out of the performance. Mm -hmm. Now, packaging wise, this album here, uh, it comes in a digipack here. Here we have uh, front and back for you, and then the interior. Um, pretty much bare bones here. Uh, we've, here's the disc here, and uh, unfortunately, no lyrics. I would have loved to have had lyrics, mm -hmm. but um, but unfortunately, no. Just just the credits here. That's about it. But um, but still, it is a nice looking package. It's nicely designed, mm -hmm. you know. And also, he is like I said, not on any major label. Right, exactly. He's he's on a, on an independent label, and sometimes that's just the budget you have mm -hmm. to deal with. You know, you can't necessarily do everything you want to packaging wise. Yeah. But and if you can support, I mean, and I know we always say that support the artist, but go to his website, Rock and Roll Poet, or hopefully on Amazon and and purchase the yeah. CD and support him yeah. because uh, yeah, it's a great album. Yeah. So we're going to play another song here, and um, I'm going to just play this one, and this song is called The Ballad of Brian Jones, and I'm pretty sure I know who he's talking about with yeah. Brian Jones. I, I can make a guess. Yeah, I can make a guess too. Here we go. Elmo Lewis and his band Laying down the sound Burning up the city Keeping it low down Bottleneck on the wood Steel, blonde head prince in the stage lights shine. Spirit of the Ealing Club, Brian Jones, come play the blues one more time. That was Brian Jones' blues, and while I don't think he ever makes any actual real reference to the Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. Um, he does make reference to London, mm -hmm. and uh, and so I think it's pretty obvious, you know, what he where the inspiration for right. the song comes from. Um, the lyrics in this one, I'm I'm at times I'm still puzzling over them as to what exactly he's trying to say uh -huh. with this song. And it's, we were both talking about that one lyric where it says something about um, a bottleneck on wooden steel. Mm -hmm. In other words, like the way the bottleneck slide hits yeah. the wood. But the way he says it is so beautiful yeah. and poetic. I mean, he just has a way. Like you said, painting the pictures with yeah. the lyrics, and then the music, almost without fail, always kind of backs up what he's doing yeah. lyrically. The mu you know, he he just really gets it. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. So, um, anyhow, though, but yeah. Um, now, what have you got for us today? Well, actually, I brought. I mean, I mean, I have to say, over the year, you know, I've been a music writer a long time. Over mm -hmm. the years, I've covered either on record or live, Kevin Bacon and the Bacon Brothers. I've covered Jeff Bridges. I've covered uh, Gary Sinise. I mean, a lot of these guys, what they have all in common is they kind of either... They're actors. Yeah, they're actors, but they, they kind of were able to use their celebrity to get their foot in the door in the musical world. Now, that's not to say none of them didn't have any musical talent. I think Gary Sinise, he just did it primarily as a fundraiser, you mm -hmm. know, and he just would play bass. Mm -hmm. Some of them, like the Bacon Brothers, have made a more serious and more extended... Much more serious, yeah. yeah. Go and, at it. And mixed attempts. I, you know, I don't want to pick on anybody that I liked or didn't like. Kevin Costner is another one that I've covered. But I have to say, Keith for Sutherland, I'm blown away because this CD is actually great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's called Down in a Hole. And at age 49, this mm -hmm. is his debut. Where even though, mm -hmm. and, and I've known for a while because I know one year he was at NAM. I mm -hmm. guess he's collected vintage guitars for a he's while. He's a big guitar collector. Big, he's big a guitar. huge music fan. And he's, and he's run a label, I think, for like 15 years, mm -hmm. I think, which is the label uh, Ironworks that, that this new album came out on. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that, you know, his, as good as he is as an actor, I mean, it's almost tragic that oh, this whole time he wasn't pursuing a career in music mm -hmm. because the songs here are very good. Um, 
And you know, before we talk a little bit more about Down a Hole, actually, let's listen to a little one of the songs. And I and I went into the show because I love so many on the CD. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to a little bit of. Uh, I think we'll, well, let's listen to a little bit of Going Home because this one's kind of up tempo and I really okay, like it. Cool. So there's a little bit of Going Home from Kiefer Sutherland. I am curious. Got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. God knows that I tried. I'm out in the cold, this act's getting old. I feel myself starting to slide. Now that's a little bit of um, going home, the new uh, off the new Kiefer Sutherland debut CD. Now um, all the songs here, at least as I recall, were mm -hmm. co-written by the producer of the the CD, whose name Jude is Cole. Jude Cole, yeah. right? Exactly. And you know, so but they do sound um, co-written by him and Jude Cole, and, which and, is right? Which exactly, by Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah. But from what I've read in the liner notes and other like interviews and stuff, it sounds like the, that these are primarily. This is kind of an autobiography. Graphical mm -hmm. CD. It sounds like um, Kiefer is writing about his experiences. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't think I'm give, saying anything that hasn't been said. He's he's got a few DUIs, got into a few mm -hmm. troubles over the years. So there are songs about alcohol, mm -hmm. and it sounds like he's been pretty honest on this CD about mm -hmm. about his life, which you give him credit for. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people try to protect their image, especially if they're in the public eye. Mm -hmm. it sounds like he's been pretty honest here, and I think this, that the songs benefit from that kind of mm -hmm. honesty. You know, kind of like what Michael, he writes about things that he knows, and agree. he tries to be honest and stuff. And, you know, the thing I would say about it is is uh, his voice almost sounds like a cross between a younger Chris Christopherson and a Bob mm -hmm. Dylan. Obviously, the songs are a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. it's he, he's not a, you know, he's not 12... 15 songs into his career now. This yeah. is his first CD. 12, 15 I've, albums yeah, it into into his career. His, I'm sorry, 12 yeah. or 15 albums I know that's career. what you meant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, it's very impressive that, like I said here, he's obviously been focusing on his acting yeah. since he was very young. Here he comes out with an album that mm -hmm. I didn't see coming, and it's actually very good, especially when I compare it to some of the other mm -hmm. you know, celebrities that I've talked about that have done albums that I've been under, you know, under well, well by. Well exactly. By, okay. Where frankly, I play him a few times and stuff, and then I put him down and I'm never not going to play him. This is an album I've, you know, and every time I've played it, I've enjoyed it more, you know, and I'd encourage people to check it out. Now, it comes in a very nice package. Um, see the cover here? It comes some uh, kind of cool pictures of him. You know, list of songs there. Comes out with a has a very nice booklet too. It has all the lyrics. They're easy to read. Very nice booklet, and it has some uh, neat photographs too and stuff. I'll hold that up by the camera here. So um, very nice, very mm -hmm. nice package. You know, mm -hmm. credits of all the musicians yeah. and everything. Did a very good job. Obviously, you know, this is probably something real special for him coming out with his first album yeah. like that and stuff. And what I thought we'd do for the next uh, track is uh, that first one was kind of upbeat, kind of like a country rocker. Mm -hmm. This is a very, he has a couple ballads on here mm -hmm. where I think he's really trying to tap into his his, his emotions and just mm -hmm. lay it out there. And this one is called I'll Do Anything and it sounds like it's you know, a story about like somebody he really loves and cares about and he's trying to convey like how, how much you mean to me. And I think mm -hmm. he does a good job of in an emotive way and musical way getting that across. So let's listen to a little oh, yeah. bit of uh, I'll Do Anything. Absolutely. Cool. No, I wouldn't change a thing And if you'll take me as I am, girl I'll do anything I'll do anything And that's uh, Kiefer Sutherland doing a little bit of uh, I'll Do Anything. And again, I wanted to play a little bit of a ballad as well. What mm -hmm. I love, about, and I don't know what part of the song we're going to play, but there's one part where he's singing and his voice drops down real low and he sounds so vulnerable. And I go, it, it's kind of like he approached singing the song like mm -hmm. he would a great performance mm -hmm. on screen as Jack Bauer or acting, something. Yeah. yeah, acting. And it's like, and, and maybe all the years of being a good actor really did kind of prepare him because mm -hmm. he does have a way of his delivery on his songs. And again, these songs are very straightforward, many of them. I think he's writing about what he knows. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think that kind of like with the case of Michael, this is somebody that I think is in touch with their musical muse, trying mm -hmm. to match the lyrics and the music. And he's got some other great musicians around him. And, mm -hmm. and Jude Cole has done a great job in producing it. And I think it's a very solid debut. Yeah. You know, it's, it makes me... Uh 
this particular, I don't think, I think this is the first time that we have had an album on the show that is by, you know, a, an actor, mm -hmm. a movie star, TV star, whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. doing an album. I don't think we've ever, I don't, I don't think, think we've ever done have. one on this show before. This is the first and time. And I haven't liked any of them that much for a long time. Uh -huh. You know, I think, I think she and him with Zoe, da Zoe Deschanel. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, we did yeah. do Zoe Deschanel yeah. with she Many and him. Yeah. And that would be the last, uh, yeah. you know, well-known actor moving into music. Yeah. That's really impressed me like this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I guess something that comes to mind is, uh, it seems to be that we tend to be a lot less forgiving to actors trying to do music, mm -hmm. trying to you know trying to be singer songwriters, trying to be musicians, you know music artists, than we are to rock stars or singer songwriter mm -hmm. musicians mm -hmm. trying to be actors. Uh, exactly. We tend to give them a lot more of a pass when they mm -hmm. do acting mm -hmm. versus the other way around. I've noticed that mm -hmm. um, sometimes. It's warranted. Sometimes yeah. the albums aren't that great, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I think it's it's really unfair. Yeah, it is. Sometimes and we do tend to be a little bit unfair about mm -hmm. that. I think that the the music critic world tends to do that. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure why. Yeah, well, and one and maybe I'll wrap it up with that. A after I had written my review, my print review, and written my notes for the show here today, I did go online and I go. I'm curious. I'm wondering if other writers are enjoying this album as much as I did. Mm -hmm. And almost uniformly, people range from. You know, it's a, it's a good first effort to people that were, like myself, really, really blown away, and that mm -hmm. hasn't always been the case. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when I've, you know, other t I think other people say I appreciate, you know, the actor, if they play music, they want to give it a go as well. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a very solid effort where he mm -hmm. did do a, you know, really put a lot of time into the album, and it's justified. I think he probably listened to the tracks back and said, hey, it sounds good, I'll go ahead and release this, and I think he, you know, I, I'm... Definitely glad the album came out. Good, good. You well, know. thanks for bringing it on. Yeah, and thanks for bringing in Michael's new album, too. Yeah. And yeah. so hopefully you'll very good albums. check yeah. out these albums. And um, uh, till next time, my name is TJR. You can check out my music at tjrmusic.com. And also you can check out my own YouTube channel, uh, which is TJR the Original, where I play music, talk about music, discuss stuff, whatever. <laughs> and my name is Robert Kinsler, and of course you can read my stuff right here at musicworthbind.com, and also you can read my concert reviews at lcregister.com, and you can read my album review columns uh, at desertstarweekly.com. So I'm all over the place. Right on, right on. Okay. So we just want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. What? You haven't subscribed yet? Please do. What's the matter with you? <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> Anyways, no, but thanks so much for, for uh, you know, for all your support, and thanks for uh, sharing the show on your, your social media. We do appreciate it. And social media, try to say that three times fast. I know, social media? I, I, yeah. I better yeah. stop while I'm ahead. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Take see, care, everybody. See you later, everybody. Bye.